And joining us now from Tallahassee is Ian McDonald, professor of oceanography at Florida State University. Ian, thanks for being with us. Good morning. What concerns you most about this report? You say it, it can leave an incorrect impression among folks. Well, one thing we need to be clear about is that the report is not based too much on hard data. The only real hard numbers they have are for the burning, the skimming, and the chemical dispersion, in addition to the recovery that they got onto the ships. So we're trying to account for about 4.1 million barrels of oil, and they only can account for about 10% of that with real hard numbers. The rest of the data in that report uh, comes from extrapolations based on theoretical considerations taken from the scientific literature. I think that should be clear. I guess another thing about the report is that, and also the flow rate technical group, is that it doesn't make any mention of the gas that's been released with this total hydrocarbon load. And the gas is a huge component of the total release. Um, and because it was released at 5,000 foot depth, a lot of that gas dissolved into the water, which has a direct impact on this biodegradation pathway that the NOAA report cites. So the gas is not being measured by any organization as of now? No, NOAA is not measuring gas, and, uh, and they haven't really counted it up. And it turns out to be a, a lot, a big volume. Um, everything is being reported in v barrels of oil, which is a liquid volume. But if you convert things to units of mass, equivalent units of mass, or energy equivalent, barrel of oil equivalent units, um, the oil plus the gas is 1.5 times the oil alone. So the gas, a lot of which got into the water, dissolved into the water, is a huge component of this total release and should be considered ecologically. Okay, now, but would you say that at least we do know that the majority of oil is accounted for, if whether it's evaporated, dispersed, or collected, or whatever? Uh, you do agree we know where the majority is, even if the numbers on them is uh, imprecise? Well, we've been given a, an estimate of where this uh, oil went, and uh, it's certainly consistent with the, what we're seeing. The satellite data doesn't show a lot of visible oil floating on the water anymore. And that's consistent with the models that show that oil, you know, light crude oil floating in the Gulf of Mexico under summertime conditions will uh, disappear from the surface waters with a half-life of about seven to five days. So at this point, we should be down to, you know, a couple of foldings, so maybe 25 percent. And that's consistent with the table. So overall, the table uh, or the results from the, in the NOAA budget are, are reasonably accurate, but it's not clear. Um, uh, that a lot of these are derived not from measurement but from extrapolation based on models. Okay, but do, do you believe that the, the amount of oil that is unaccounted for could still pose a threat to, to the ecology and, and marine life and wildlife? Absolutely. We're talking the, in, in the NOAA table or in the table in this NOAA report, they talk about 26 percent of this total 4.9 million barrels. That's five Exxon Valdez units that's still residual, present in the environment, uh, subs uh, uh, which can impact the organisms and the ecology directly. A lot of that material is buried in the marine sediments of the coast and the coastal soils. And that buried material, we know from past experience, will be around for decades and will have an ecological impact for decades. As for the water that's, as for the oil that's dispersed or dissolved in the water, uh, what we're hoping is that the dilution is sufficient that it won't have an acute toxic impact. But it's almost certain to have a residual impact, a sublethal impact, uh, possibly reducing the overall productivity of the ecosystem by some measurable, some measurable percentage. Right. So di di dispersed, uh, evaporated, words like that d don't, don't necessarily mean uh, environmentally benign. Well, they don't mean gone. Uh, you know, evaporated, I'll give you, is gone. But that's probably you know, no more than 10% by mass of the total amount. Um, but the rest of the material is still in the water. And it was interesting when uh, Browner and, and uh, Lubchenco and others spoke, they said, well, that the, the efforts of the Unified Command had removed a lot of the oil and that Mother Nature had done her part. Well, if you actually look at the numbers, Mother Nature is doing 90% of the work uh, for this cleanup effort. And I sure hope we're going to start paying back Mother Nature for her tremendous effort in this very soon. I mean, you, do you think this report uh, is misleading in that respect, that it, that it gives more credit to the human efforts at cleanup? Uh, the report doesn't so per, per se, but I think some of the statements were made introducing the report certainly made it seem as though the, uh, the uh, um, uh, unified command were doing the work, whereas in fact the, it's the, uh, that's the tag tail wagging the dog. Um, 
when you when you hear from uh, Administrator Lubchenco talking about the numbers, I mean, she she doesn't seem to be overselling the results of the report. I mean, she really talks a lot about uh, studies that need to be ongoing and and more testing done over many many years. Um, you know, uh, uh, that that a lot more needs to be done. Of course, I mean, do you do you agree that she? She I agree, and I think she made some good statements there. I mean, she talked about, for example, the bluefin tuna, which is a, a, a commercially very important fish. It's also a fish stock that's tremendously overfished, and so it's, it's under stress before anything happens. And she mentioned that, you know, any bluefin tuna larva or juvenile fish that would be in the water column or up in the surface of the water and exposed to oil, um, you know, would die. Well, the oil was covering thousands of square miles, so that's you know, many, many millions, perhaps billions of uh, bluefin larvae uh, and juveniles that may not make it into the fishery. That's a severe impact. We're going to have to track that. But there are many other species that we, we know less well. Um, for example, flying fish. Um, they're right there in those surface waters. They can't escape. But we don't have any idea about what the population of flying fish should have been before the spill, let alone what it'll be after the spill. So yes, there's a lot more work needed to be done, and uh, Lubchenko was correct in that. Right, and she made clear, as do you, the, the, the level of scientific uncertainty here. That's right. I think we have to be very clear about that. This, this report was not science, per se. This was a report. It's useful. It explains what we're seeing, but we should be clear that although the, the oil is not visible anymore, it's still in the environment, and we still have to be very vigilant about tracking down the, the impacts of it. All right. Professor Ian McDonald, Florida State University, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.